Welcome back everybody. In this video, we're gonna be taking a look at our next DMVPN topic, which is DMVPN that is VRF aware for phase three. Now, this can be done spoke side or hub side. I've seen it done both, I've done it both. Really, there's no difference between the two, just which side is doing which. So what we're gonna be doing is on iOS 22, we're gonna put the hub into a VRF. And if you're not sure what a VRF is or you know why that would make sense to do, let's go ahead and kind of whiteboard this out a little bit and talk about it because it's gonna it's a uh, something I've talked many customers into doing because of the fact that I think it's a benefit to do. So let's go ahead and kind of break this down. So a VRF in, in its simplest terms is a virtual routing and forwarding table. So it's user created, and once you create it and apply it to an interface, you're placing that interface in its own routing table. So everybody should be refer, uh, familiar with the global routing table, the global rib, and that works out just fine. It does its job and everything uh, works out hunky-dory. But when you're talking about traffic from the perspective of you know operations in the network, sorry about that, you are gonna be putting everything in the global routing table. And that's exactly what's happening right now. All the routes, the default route, the EIGRP routes, everything's in the global routing table. Now, if we wanted to separate that, which is what we're gonna be doing, is we're going to be separating the underlay or this communication right, right here that's happening between all of these nodes. I'm just gonna put everything inside of a big brown well, I'm going to include CSR9 because eventually CSR9 will be involved with that. So see it, the brown is the underlay. That's going to be getting all of our communication to work. But if I go with blue, blue is the overlay. So I'm going to draw a straight line to the connection. So blue is the overlay. Blue is the GRE tunnel that we have created. Right now, we only have one GRE tunnel, right? We have tunnel one. It's a multi-point GRE tunnel. We're leveraging NHRP to find all the bindings and stuff like that. So essentially, a more accurate depiction of this is actually like this. If I was to draw one really big cloud, and then iOS 22 joins it, iOS 25 joins it, CSR 11 joins it, and then iOS 24 joins it. And then we have the 10.1.1.0 slash 24 network. That's basically what we've achieved. They're all part, they're all members of the same DMVPN cloud. Now that works and it gets the job done, but long term, everything's in the same routing table. So we have both the default route and we have all of the EIGRP routes in the global routing table. Now, in most cases, this isn't a big deal if you're using just a plain old fashioned, plain Jane default route, all zeros to a, uh, a public IP next hop. And you're doing EIGRP, it's gonna the longest match is gonna win. In other words, any type of anything longer than a slash one will be routed via EIGRP. So that would work. Anything that doesn't match is going to go the default route, and everything's gonna be happy. But there's been many times where I've had situations where I need to take that to the next level, and I need to be able to process that in such in such a manner that allows me to communicate with the uh, wherever it is, whatever it is that I'm connected to, I need to be able to connect, uh, t talk in such a manner that I don't have to worry about the default route ever coming into play because I might be doing some sort of dynamic routing. I might be doing BGP in the underlay and EIGRP in the overlay or vice versa. Likely you're not gonna be running EIGRP with a service provider, but you're probably gonna, you can run BGP in both the underlay and in the overlay. It's not smart to do that in the same routing table, but it still can be done. Uh, very unorthodox des uh, design, if you ask me. Now, the way that we could go and set this up is uh, how we're going to do it is we're going to create a VRF on iOS 22, and then we're going to place it on the interface, and then we're going to configure the tunnel to reference the VRF. We're going to use a tunnel VRF command and we're gonna call the VRF name. So the actual command is going to be tunnel VRF and we're gonna create the VRF DMVPN. So it's pretty straightforward. Once we do that, then we're gonna to have to create a static route, the point that becomes VRF aware, 
and then we'll have to make sure to put the interface inside of the VRF and make sure that it can ping the public IP address and all that type of stuff. So it's a, a couple step process, but it's pretty easy once you've done it, gotten it up and running. Then all of the spoke side tunnels, the spokes uh, attached to the DMV in cloud, they'll have to get their, their tunnel flapped. They'll bounce it, shut, no shut, bring it back online, everything will be copacetic and you'll be good to go. So let's go ahead and get that squared away and ready to go and we'll go from there. So we're gonna go ahead and get this party started. So I'm gonna actually go ahead and clear the screen. And on iOS 22, we're gonna go and configure this. I'm gonna say, underneath here, we're gonna do a VRF definition. VRF definition is DMVPN. The definition is basically allows me to do both IPv4 and IPv6 at the exact same time. So what I'm gonna go do is I'm gonna type in an RD of one colon one, just some arbitrary value, and I'm gonna enable the address family IPv4 unicast. I do that and I exit out, do show run interface, or uh, do show IP interface brief, do show run interface gig zero slash two. We're gonna to go to interface gig zero slash two and type in VRF forwarding of DMVPN. That's going to place the interface inside of the tunnel, or I'm sorry, the VRF. We're gonna go reapply the IP address and do show run interface um, gig zero slash two. There we have it. So now we have to do do show IP route. So you'll notice now that there is no default route. Right, but we're looking at the global routing table. If I do show IP route VRF DMVPN, I'm gonna have a connected route, but I don't have a default route. So I'm gonna specify IP route VRF DMVPN, and I'm gonna specify 0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.
we should have learned a bunch of routes. So I should have 33, 33, 33 in here, and I do. If I do a trace route, trace route to 33.33.33.33, sourcing from uh, source interface is gonna be loopback zero numerically. I'm able to get there without issue. So I jump through the, um, I go to the hub for the first one, and the second one I go directly to the spoke. So in this case here, uh, phase three kicked in, everything's looking good. I jump to iOS 25, which is my next top router, and I do a show IP NHRP, and I have a dynamic on-demand tunnel that was created for this connection here. We see the next top override is working the way that it's expected to, and everything is good. So my VRF aware configuration is working the way that it's expected to. Now, we look at the show run interface tunnel two, or sorry, tunnel one. Here, what we're looking at and what we need to be aware of is we need to be aware of the fact that we're pointing the tunnel to look inside of the VRF DMVPN. That's where the tunnel source is sitting. So we're basically just, the tunnel itself is not in a VRF. The tunnel itself is in the global routing table. So what we're doing effectively is we're separating the routing tables and also separating the underlay from the overlay. The underlay is in the VRF facing the provider. The overlay is in the global routing table where of all of our main routes are going to sit. Then this several times for customers, especially in large scale environments where it makes more sense to have a VRF to split that off. We can have a bunch of BGP routes and stuff like that and have its own routing topology from there. A default router is all you need in this particular case, and it works out just, just fine. And that's basically what we're, we've accomplished here with this particular design. So beyond that, that's pretty much all you need to worry about in terms of VRF aware DMVPN on the hub side. The spoke would be the exact same configuration. I'm not going to do that here, but you can just mimic what I did on any of the spokes and be able to accomplish the same goal. So that's pretty much it for this video. Thanks so much for stopping by, guys, and hanging out with me. And until next time, guys, take it easy.